everybody's having a great day. I wanted to tackle this first thing in the morning. I thought about it uh, long and hard yesterday while everybody was going back and forth, but I decided I want to really think about how I was going to approach this. My thing, if you know me, is not sensationalism. It's not jumping on hot trends. It's about taking something and really giving it serious contemplation for the purpose of presenting something in a way that people can take it and grow from it, become more empowered, become more aware, uh, become more centered and focused. So it took me some time. I wanted to make sure uh, that I addressed it right, make sure I dealt with my own emotions and everything else uh, so that I'm squared away when I sit down and I talk about this. But uh, by now, you've heard about the ongoing issue with Jonathan Majors um, and his girlfriend. I'm going to get to that real quick. Um, but uh, in case you've been living somewhere, nowhere near media, and you don't know who Jonathan Majors is, uh, he was on Lovecraft Country. He was in the, the black, I can't think of the uh, name of that movie, but it was uh, The Heart of They Fall. Idris Elba and a bunch of them. He was in that one. Uh, he's in the new Creed Three movie uh, as the antagonist, and he has developed a lot of steam over the last few years. And he has a white girlfriend. Uh not shocked, not surprised. I've been knowing about how he moves when the first time I looked and checked into him when he started building steam. Um, those of you who follow me know how I feel about interracial relationships when it comes to blacks. But I am a person that does not judge a person or I ain't gonna say I don't judge you. What I'm gonna say is I don't hold ill will towards people who choose to date outside of the race. I just immediately understand that there are certain things I can't expect from you. Uh, to me, you can't truly say you're pro-black. You can say I care about black people. You can say I care about that part of me, but you can't say you're pro-black. Uh, and the biggest decision of your life is to choose to move away from your blackness simply is. Um, I once heard that, I once heard uh, Dr. Umar Johnson say that the greatest commitment to black, pro-blackness or black empowerment for a black man is to be committed to a black woman. And I think that goes both ways. Uh, now, the thing is, I want to touch on something because I'm going to get to this because what happened is Jonathan Major's girlfriend accused him of assault, domestic abuse assault, and he was arrested, which uh, an arrest now on domestic uh, abuse shouldn't even twinkle something until you get some information or some uh, evidence that says it's true because now simply saying it happened is enough for an arrest. It doesn't even have to be a bruise. It doesn't have to be anything else. It simply has to be an accusation. If police are called out for a domestic dispute, somebody's more than likely going to jail. Uh, it's simply the way it is. And, and it was done that way because a lot of times they were um, dismissing it and then bad things were happening. So uh, domestic, uh, domestic abuse, uh, intimate partner violence became a big thing. Uh, and I think that it needs to be. I think that we need to protect our mates. And be, please also understand that every domestic violence case isn't a man against a woman. It turns out that women are just as violent. Uh, they're just not as destructive. In other words, when a man becomes violent, he has the capacity to do a lot more damage than a woman. But women hit almost equally when it comes to violence. Um, that's my own research. That's not me talking at the top of my head. Um, does not justify anything one way or another. We need to learn how not to hit, not to harm, how to communicate, how to have conflict resolution. Now, uh, that's within the black community. I'm not defending anything else. Not at this time. I'm, I don't believe that you, you harm somebody unless they're trying to harm you. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to go back to what I'm here to talk about. So 
first and foremost, I want to get the technical shit out of the way. It didn't take long for his attorneys to come back. They immediately responded, said he wasn't guilty. They immediately responded, said they have evidence to prove so. And they have. They've produced video evidence. They've even gotten witness, including the driver of the car that they were in. All uh, corroborate his side of the story. And so we're looking that if they haven't been dropped already, I'm pretty sure today that the uh, charges that have been filed will be dropped. And she's even recanted her story after they found out, after her side found out that there was video evidence of what actually transpired. Now, let me say this. Um, there are going to be some of my people who are going to say, well, he chose Becky. What happens, happens. I get it. I absolutely get that shit. Um, I love my brothers, and until my brothers prove to me that they're not my brothers, I love them. Doesn't mean I agree with their decisions, and if I'm asked about it, I'm going to speak boldly, and I'm going to speak directly, but I'm going to love them just like I love my brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ community. They know how I feel about that particular situation, but I love them. So just simply doing something that I don't agree with no matter how passionate I am about my stance on it, doesn't necessarily qualify me to just throw you to the wolves. Uh, but you've got to be aware of what you're getting yourself into. you got to understand some things. And I'm going to talk about uh, some things. I was hoping to get my brother, uh, filmmaker Tony Lindsay, on uh, either the Black Voice or uh, the teacher's uh, to talk about this because he had a very unique insight into it being in uh, the film industry and I wanted to get it. But what I did is I took his quote and I brought it with me. Hopefully I'll be able to get him on later today or get him on tomorrow. Uh, but I wanted to talk about it and I wanted to deal with it today before I got into everything else I needed to do. But what we have to understand is this. Um, so much of who we are goes into it. Now, there's a lot of talk and a lot of things. Everybody, It's everybody else's fault. There's no accountability. So there's a lot of beta conversation about how black men feel about black women. I'm not going to get too deeply in that, but I am going to touch on it because I think it's important. Uh, the one thing that the next thing I'm going to get out of the way and then I'm going to move through these points that I've made and I'm going to get out for here. Next thing I want to make is save the bullshit argument or excuse that we don't we can't control who we fall in love with we absolutely 100 percent control who we fall in love with everybody has standards even the people that some of you want to look down on from the most sadity black woman to the most hood dude everybody has a standard everybody has something they will accept something they won't accept there are some women out there right now is not no matter what dating a dude with a felony they're not going to try to get to know him they're not going to try to get to understand him. he won't get close enough then there are some guys some girls out there that won't date the nice guy if he doesn't have an edge on him if he doesn't have some tattoos if he can't don't look like he can go three rounds with the roughest dude She's not going to want anything to do with him. She'll throw him in the friend zone. He's cool to hang out and kick it with sometime. But she's never going to take him seriously. She's going to lock him out. When he can throw all the game he wants to throw, he can spit it all. Let me tell you, everybody has the things they will not accept and the things that they are look, willing to look over and then the things they've got to have. Now, so when you sit up and say, I, I don't control, you definitely control because there's a person out there right now that you, no matter what they do, you're not going to fall in love with them. So it tells me you do control who you fall in love with. Now, how stringent you are upon your standards is a personal, individual thing, but definitely everybody controls who gets close enough for them to them to fall in love how to process. You know, even in my heyday when I was out there and everything was going and I was one of these guys, man, out there, uh, they were throwing at me. I never even bedded a white woman much less try to get in a relationship just wasn't going to do it that was my thing i mean some uh white women that people would probably say were pretty hot and all that not doing it just nope absolutely not that was my thing nope don't want no pink toe just just my thing uh, i'm good with the beckys i'm good with the karens i'm good so put, put that to the side save that 
say that. Yeah, but well, they were in my proximity. I'm pretty sure there's a black dude or a black woman in your proximity that has the same characteristics, that can relate to you better, that's been through the type of stuff that you're going through, that you should look at and see a represent, representation of yourself. So you can help who you fall in love with. The next thing I want to get into is who you choose as a mate is a direct reflection of how you see yourself. What am I saying? I'm saying that when you dismiss the blackness, let's talk black men because black men who become successful, we find out that uh, while it's pushed and pushed that 88 percent of black 88 to 89 percent of black men who are married are black, married to black women so that's not this mass act exodus of black men going out fine but what we do know that as the success level and the income increases they are more likely to be with a white woman and there's an interesting dynamic to that and i'm going to get to it um and the idea is that they're out there going after these women. And there are. There are some black men who are convinced that having a black, white woman is a prize. That there's something special about the whiteness. Now, some of that can be traced all the way back to slavery because the one thing that was completely off limits was what? The white woman. So you said, for years, I couldn't have her. So now that I can, I'm going after it because there's got to be something about it. And I miss the thing inside of me. I miss the beauty of who I am. I don't have a true racial identity so that I don't see the beauty and the purity in who I am. So I don't see the beauty and the purity in the woman. And don't get me wrong. This happens on both sides. But what I can tell you from the research I've done is that black women are the least likely of all women racial demographics to marry outside of their race. So keep that in mind. So because I don't want to hear well, why are you just focusing? I'm focusing on what we're talking about, what we see far too often in this particular arena. Successful black men who end up with white women. We'll just leave it with that. That's what we're focusing on. But I'm going to talk about some stuff that black black women do to make you guys happy. But uh, I'm real big on if I'm saying I'm a man that comes some responsibility with being a man outside of having something hanging between my legs outside of being able to plant my seed in a woman outside of all the other things that everybody wants to talk about there comes a responsibility to protect to defend to lead what do i mean when i say lead i mean a leader is out front the leader holds and takes accountability for what happens underneath his leadership you can't say you're a head you can't say you're a king if you're constantly placing blame about what's going on in your kingdom if somebody if it's always somebody else's fault then somebody else needs to be leading somebody else needs to be so in essence while i may not be doing it i have to ask myself why is it happening and what can i do to change it am i saying that it's easy am i saying that uh that there's this easy road for black men to be what we need to be no we're constantly being uncut they're constantly trying to feminize our image they're constantly trying to emasculate us in ways that reduces our input and our influence in our community that doesn't mean we have to acquiesce to it that doesn't mean we have to fall back to it that doesn't mean we have to play by their rules Rules, it means that we need to understand the power of who we are and how we're going to be most effective in dealing with the, the, the protection, the growth, the empowerment, and the advancement of our people. That's our responsibility. That's what being a man is in any realm and definitely as a black man. So in essence, that's so important, but it's a reflection. So when I dismiss the blackness in a black woman in lieu of choosing a white woman, because I don't think anybody knowingly says, I'm going to settle for less. I'm going to specifically go out here and get something that I know is less, especially when I know I probably have a better chance with a, a black woman who I think is better. But I'm going to go get the lesser. Nobody does that. So the moment that you choose the white woman, it's a reflection of how you see yourself. And let me tell you how. So you can't dismiss the blackness in a black woman without dismissing the purity and the blackness in yourself. So what, in other words, when you look at a black woman and you look at a white woman and you say by the very nature of her whiteness, she's better than the black woman, you subconsciously also say by the very nature of his whiteness, the white man is better than me. You automatically take on this inferiority complex that has been 
pushed and pushed and pushed. This racial inferiority complex that says by the very nature of their whiteness, they're better. By the very nature of their whiteness, they're more beautiful. By the very nature of their whiteness, they're more intelligent. Uh, and so what happens is you're pursuing this image, this perception, this idea that white is better. The white man's ice is colder. The white man's woman is better than black women. And so you actually, without even realizing it, uh, are reflecting how you see yourself in this world. That's one of the reasons why I could never, ever even sleep with a white woman was because I saw the beauty in me and I wanted something to match that beauty. It doesn't mean I chose, I always chose the best succession, but I'll take any black woman I've ever been with over any white woman out there right now that, 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 that may represent everything that a man could possibly want or think he wants. I'll take every woman I've been with and it didn't work before I'll take her. And people say, that's just crazy. You you could get, uh, and again, I have friends who are married to the opposite race on both sides, male and female. And that's their business ultimately. Again, I don't have any hatred toward them. I have love to them. I'm cool with them and their mate. That was their choice. But there's a certain thing that goes along with it. And absolutely do not tone down my message. I have, it's just, it, 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 it is what it is. We got to learn to love ourselves. This whole idea, this new passport dudes, passport guys, passport men, whatever the shit is where, we, you know, we, we, we dissing black women and we're going to different countries and we're finding wives. Number one, that's, no, that's not no new shit and it ain't just a black man thing. White men been doing that shit. But white men been traveling to South America, Central America, the Philippines and other places for years, bringing back wives that's going to do what they told them to do, just happy to be in an environment that's better than the environment they left. That's been happening. Uh, to me, when I have an environment, I'm, I'm a person that believes in taking on the challenge. I'm a person that believes in having a responsibility. I believe, you know, I didn't choose this situation, this, this, this country that I'm in, but it's here. It's my experience. I am a descendant of a slave. Uh, preferably, I want to marry a descendant of a slave. And so I've never even had a thing for black women from Africa that cannot relate to slavery. Uh, I've dated a few Islanders, uh, but again, they were definitely enslaved and colonized. Um, but their experience still wasn't the same as mine. And so my thing is there are women here who are dealing with the same challenges that erupt from save slavery that are the legacy of slavery. I wrote about that in my 19th book, Born in Captivity. Psychopathology is a legacy of slavery. There are a bunch of... Um, women here who are dealing with the fallout of that, that we have not yet conquered, that we still have work to do, the, the multi-generational trauma and everything else that falls out of it. I, I, I don't, there are a bunch of things I see my sisters do that I don't like, but I understand where it's coming from. Nobody is sitting up, uh, the violence that I see in young men that I immediately address, that I have no patience for, no tolerance for, I absolutely abhor it, abhor it, but I tell you what, I understand where it comes from. That's why I put so much work into stopping it. So my thing is I have a responsibility here. The easy thing is to run off and grab something that I don't have to work on, that I can kind of mold and manipulate and make it be what I want to be. I want something I, I, I can put into and build because I see the beauty in it. And I see the beauty in our women. I see the beauty in our women. They're hurt. They're frustrated. And yeah, there are some out there that are just cannot, but I want to get into something. The next thing is those brothers out there that make the argument that white women are more docile and less confrontational than black women. Let me tell you something. This isn't just my observation. This is my observation, but it's also my research. There's nothing more lethal than a white woman. There's nothing more dangerous to a black man than a white woman willing to weaponize her whiteness. That's exactly what happened to Jonathan Majors, and it happens all the time. What, what, what happens if there's no evidence to refute what she said? Something happened. She didn't get her way. I know the story is still developing. Something happened. I think something happened when she looked in his phone and saw that he had been around somebody else, and she threw a hissy fit. And so now she realized that she ain't the only one, that somebody else is shooting at that dollar. 
and she uh she she acted on it they are definitely more than look and see who's more likely to kill their spouse not black women black women are more likely among all uh uh people who have significant others to be killed by their significant others intimate partner homicide but they're not most likely they 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 do and they have the white woman for i mean especially unprovoked i'm tired i didn't want to be here anymore just their case after case after case of that happening so the idea she might not be arguing with you but you might want to be making sure what you're drinking is what she said it was because trust me they getting you they out there and they're doing it and that, that just look at the re do the research um so the idea that they are uh more easy to get along with uh no and they're just as more likely if not they're just as likely or not more likely to go after your riches when when it's time to break up no different here's the next thing that um black women are gold diggers they they, they want to come get you and they're opportunistic no white women are opportunistic and this is where i want to read this statement uh from uh tony Lindsay. Uh, keep in mind, Tony Lindsay is a filmmaker. We brought him up before. He's actually done some work with uh, some pretty notable people. Uh, independent filmmaker, and we need more people like him. Uh, he's in New York right now. Um, uh, I, he, he says, I know we always see common uh, the common denominator amongst these black male celebrities getting into trouble as them being with white women. But I think we are making a mistake of assuming that they all of a sudden chose white women after their success now i believe that everyone has a right this is tony this is not me i'm reading this stuff i believe that everyone has a right to love whomever they love but i also think that hollywood seeks out a specific type of black male for these grand opportunities that they give usually one at a time but we'll get to that later one who engulfs himself in non-black social circles and culture and indulges in activity for example, heavy drug use and interests that often run in direct conflict to our wider or broader culture, including dating white women. These dudes never really messed with, and he didn't use the word mess with, with black women to begin with. And I think we're missing that. I think that from the from day one, they've been focused on black, uh, white women. Then he says, my son goes to one of the top performing arts schools in the country, and I see how easy it can be to lose the connection with our community and values in search of opportunity and acceptance. Let me scroll. Acceptance in the entertainment industry. He is surrounded by so much debauchery and toxicity on a daily basis. That's why I take my responsibility to keep him grounded and aware of who he, he who he is very seriously okay there are a couple of points i want to make based on that number one like he says opera you're going to see a lot of this in hollywood in the entertainment industry because part of that is they want to type of man the type of man that's bold with bass in his voice that speaks out clearly all right you have them you have them but you're going to have a lot more who are going to choose the Becky. For every Denzel and Samuel L., you're going to have a bunch of others who choose women who don't look like us. And, 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 and it's something that starts early. Something that I want to get into is the other side of this. When it comes down to uh, black women being opportunist or gold diggers, white women are better opportunist and gold diggers they they tend to just be better at it and so we don't get it because all you hear when you hear about well she was with him it's okay for him to be with her because she was with him when he was in high school she was with him when he was in college before he ever signed his first contract she was there that's because she's been conditioned and trained to recognize the talent and that's the one thing that black white women will do more readily than black women and they get burnt not only by black men but by by white men too and that is they will choose the talent and the potential invest in it ride it out and stick with it until the guy wins 
And so it is. It looks like, hey, man, when I didn't have Jack, she was here. No, she chose you for a reason. I guarantee you. Look at, go, go to college or go to a school where it's predominantly white. And look at the interracial couples. Look who the white girls are attaching themselves to. They're either one of the smartest guys in the school are highly athletically inclined or gifted in some way where you can look at them and say, that kid's probably going to do something special. They are going to attach themselves to them. And it's normally some white girl that probably will not have a chance to get a rich white guy. Because a rich white guy has a pick of the litter. This is the way it's set up. So... If she doesn't consider herself to be pure little, if she's average or she did. And here's another thing that most white men who definitely come from money. So early in the game, they got it. Guess what? They, know, they, they tend to deal with old money. They tend to marry money. They tend to marry girls with backgrounds of money. They, they aren't trying to rescue somebody, you know, from poverty. They're looking for somebody that can come in that has their family has status too because that's a part of the strategy. There's an entire strategy to this. They aren't always marrying for love, especially that first time. They're marrying to position themselves to uh, actualize the power they have and to accumulate more power. Uh, you'll normally see them go through this phase around about their 40s where they're going to divorce the first wife. And now they're going to go after something they really want because they've established themselves. They've built their reputation. They've done all these things. And you see that. And I've seen a case where, oh, uh, matter of fact, yesterday, uh, a case where a white woman killed her ex-husband and his new wife because she worked. She met him when he was in college, worked, married him, worked while he went through medical school. Then after he finished medical school, he went to Harvard Law School and became one of the top uh, performing lawyers in San Diego and he dumped her for a younger version of her. It was a trip how much this young uh, paralegal looked like she did when he first met her. He dumped her and you know and even though she was getting 16000 a month in child support and alimony um, he was about to go for the kids so that was going to be reduced and she just rolled up one day while they were in bed and lit their ass up. Um Anybody can crack. Any, anybody can crack and, and, and anybody can take somebody through that shit. The idea that black men are the only one carrying white, I mean, black women through shit is bullshit. White men do it and they do it for more and they're better at it. But the difference is they control the power, they control the media. So we get what they give us. And so we build our observations based off of media. I build mine based off of research and data. So I know uh, more likely what the real truth is. And I try to share it as much as I possibly can. I'm not making any excuses for anything that either black men or black women are doing that isn't pro-black, that isn't pro-love, that isn't uh, a representation of what we should be doing. I'm not co-signing none of that bullshit on either side. So that's not why I'm here. Why I'm here is to talk about why we end up in situations like this. It's because we bout the lie that the white man's ice is cold and that there's something special about having that. But uh, anyway, so when we look at this, here's the difference though. And this is why so many black men and so many people in general are willing to say, well, since he was with her from way back here, let me tell you what, the white woman will marry potential. How many times have you over the last three years seen a, a post by a black woman saying she's not marrying potential. And there are reasons why that. This isn't an argument to go out and find somebody just because they have potential because everybody has potential, actually. Now, the difference is, do you see somebody with a vision? I tell people all the time, uh, and I'm not just talking about along the lines of race. When I meet someone and I'm talking, and I said, you know, to, to the women that I work with, and I definitely do this with young black girls. Instead of asking a man where he works, what he drives, where he lives, ask him what the vision is for his life. Because the vision will tell you and show you his path. How clear is he on his vision? How committed is Can you look at his life and how he's moving and it align with what he's saying with you? If he's telling you that 
he's going to have his own business and he's going to do this and he's going to do this and that. And every time you talk to him, he's on the game or he's smoking a blunt with his boys or whatever, then he yap yapping. But if you look at him, he says he's on the business. You look at him, he's got books. He's studying. He, he's setting some money aside for startup. He's, he's, he's moving. He's meet, having meetings with people that can drop knowledge on him. And he, you can see him developing the expertise and the, and, and, and the polished uh, uh, strengths that he's going to need in order to do it. You say, okay, he's got potential. And then you got to ask yourself, what am I good at? What am I looking at? Is he head? See, he can be a good person, but not headed in the same direction. And that's one of the things we get thinking that if I marry a good person, I'm, but if you marry a good person and they're headed here and you're headed there, there's going to be a whole lot of times you're not on the same page, a whole lot of internal conflicts that you're not going to know how to work out because you're headed in two directions. You're not even heading to the same destination. And so at any given day, depending on who's guiding that day or who's got the force that day, somebody's going to be unhappy. When you're moving towards your direction, they're not going to be unhappy. When you're moving towards their direction, you're not going to be. And that's what's going you got to find somebody that when you look at their vision, it aligns with who you see yourself being, where you see yourself going. Sometimes it's a guy that's sitting up saying, man, I'm going up here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I want a housewife. I want a woman that's going to take care of my kids. I'm going to take care of her. I'm going to set her up. She's never going to have to work a day in her life. And you look and say, all I ever wanted to be was a mom and a wife. That's that's some. Now you, you're on the right track. Now you got to find out just how much of this he really is about and what he's doing. Maybe you meet somebody and say, man, I, I want a woman who's in the same vein with me. We, we got the same passion. We're working on the same thing. We're, again, headed in the same direction. Now you got to look at him. How does he treat women? How did he treat the women in his life? How does he handle me uh, when it's not focused? See, everybody shows up with what they think they need to show up with in order to get what they want. You got to, well, how does he act when he doesn't realize I'm observing him? And, 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 and on and on. But the goal is... To, to, to find somebody that you can move with. Here's the thing. White girls are taught to, what's a good word? They were taught, they're taught recruiting techniques. Recruiters in sports have to be good at recognizing potential because what they're going to need them to be at the next level, they might not be there yet, but they've got to be able to see the potential in it to say you can go to the next level. White girls are taught that black women show up after the success because they don't want to marry potential. And unfortunately, that puts them behind the eight ball with the top performers uh, in black men because white women been hawking them before anybody knew who they was, before he was one of the top players in the NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, before he was a top performer in Hollywood. They were watching him. They picked him up at... at, at uh, visual arts performing school they like wherever oh he's going somewhere he's got something that's something about and they are watching and scouting black talent in the male population and they're moving up on them just go to any college especially any division one school and watch find your top five athletes from any sport and watch the groupings around them as far as females. They'll have some black girls around them, you know, but the ones that are heroing them, making them seem like they're bigger than they're stroking their egos and trying to get next to them, willing to do some stuff that the black girl's probably not at, at that point ready to do, white girls. And they coming. And you you out there and you feeling like hey what's going on and you 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 playing it and this is why it's so important to properly racially socialize our kids especially our black men i can't even think of one particular word that my grandparents said to me that made me feel like a white girl was off limits they told me who i was they explained to me my blackness they told me that because i was black i was going to have to be exceptional in anything i did in order to get the same recognition that the average white man had but they told me i was capable they told me that i was exceptional they told me i was phenomenal and maybe it was just the love that i had for my grandmother maybe it's the love i had for my sisters maybe just looking at the struggle of the black woman maybe having an interest in Malcolm X and his love for black women and how he spoke out for black women. And maybe that was the start of it. Just looking up and going, hey, 
you know, that's something special about a black woman. But I can tell you, even when I'm dealing in professional sense with sisters versus anybody else, there's a difference in my sisters. I don't care where they're at in their, in their point of discovery, where they're at in their walk of life. There's something different. Same thing with my brothers. There's something unique and different about us. And, and, and a, some of that is being able to relate. I can relate to the blackness. I can relate to the experience. I can relate to your hurt and your pain because I know where it comes from. I put the time, energy, and effort to understanding it. But let me explain something to you. We black men have to stop pushing that narrative that having a white woman elevates us. What it does is it puts a bigger target on our back. It redirects in the, in the natural course of life anything that we build back into their economy. No matter how much she loves a black man, she's still a white woman. Uh, and there are the Beckys out there that done got them a piece of black man and it ain't nothing else they want and they ain't going back no matter what. But the average white woman with a black man chosen because she saw something coming. And when it's gone, she's going to take that, take his kids and go and, and go to a place where she's safe because the average black community is probably not receiving her. And I'm not saying this is a 100 absolute. There's no such things. There's always exceptions. But what I'm saying is there's a responsibility besides sex when it comes to being a black man. One of the biggest things we teach our boys is the importance and the responsibility of generational wealth. We've got to catch up on that. We're so far behind. It's absolutely ridiculous. And the weight, racial wealth gap is widening. So when I marry, if when I marry black, you know, even if she divorces me and gets half, she's still black. It's still there. I might not like it. It may I might be hot and burning. But if I marry a white woman, she divorces me. She just took half my damn money back into the white economy. Completely out of control of black people. And we have to think with that type of responsibility. See, we have bought into this whole individualized mindset. They've sold us on it. And I mean black men and black women both. They've sold us on it. They've sold us on the idea. Forget everybody else. It's just about me. It's what I want. And so nobody's thinking about the collective. Nobody's thinking about the responsibility to community. Nobody is even thinking about the offspring or their progeny. Nobody's thinking about how are the decisions I'm making now affecting my kids. One of the biggest things I saw, I'm going to tell you, uh, Gilbert Arenas admitting that he got with, what's her name? Y'all know who I'm talking about. Got with her so that his kids wouldn't be dark like him. And those kids turned out exactly his complexion. I'm like, yes, yes. But I wonder what they're gonna think when they hear him say that. Because he is the primary source of their identity. That's something else we've lost in this modern culture is the dismissal of the influence of the black male in the black home, in the black family. Just look at Mother's Day versus Father's Day. And that's not how it was always. The black man used to be the one that named the child because the name is a part of their identity. It's going to be a reminder of who they are and what is expected of them. When you looked at who you were, you looked at the lineage of your father. So when those kids sit up and say, well, my dad didn't think enough of his own self to want us to look like him. Think about it. When you're really feeling yourself as a man, one of the biggest affirmations you can have is your, 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 your significant other to have your seed. And that seed resembles you. There's, a re there's so much going on here. Look. Again. I'm not down with the whole snow bunny thing. That's that's I'm not down with it. Uh, I'm definitely from a professional and scientific perspective, not finna go and fall into this idea that marrying outside of my race somehow puts me in a better position and I'm going to have a better life. And they are just more nicer. No. They're more cunning. They they know how to behave and act to get you in. 
But no, they're not. Trust me. Been out there, seen it all, watched my boys. Um, some, if I said their name, you'll know them. Jump out there and realize it ain't what you think it is. Again, and I, on, the, on the flip side, I have a couple of friends who've been married years and rear kids. They're grown as interracial, and they are loving on each other like nothing else. And I can say the same thing for a bunch of black friends. That black love can be just as powerful, if not more powerful. It's not about the race. It's about the heart. And my thing is, I can't express the deepest love that I have to give outside of myself when it doesn't look like myself without subconsciously dismissing who I am. And this isn't some naive placement of loyalty to something. This is simply understanding human identity factor, how I identify. I can't look at myself and see the best in myself and choose something that does not represent what I see. When I do that, I am subconsciously telling myself I'm not the best. If I'm chasing something that I cannot relate to, because in some way I feel that's best for me, then I can't relate to the best that's in me. And it's something that we really got to learn. It's something that we need to stop doing. It's something that we need to stand up to. And to, uh, let, me, let, me, let me say this too, to the whole beta male, alpha male argument, it's so many other things outside of alphas and betas, first of all. But understand that betas are necessary. It's, this isn't an alpha beta thing as much as it is. See, if you had nothing but alphas, everybody would be trying to take everybody in a different direction. But if you look at something, when I think of alpha and beta, probably the thing, first thing that pops in my mind are wolves because of the hierarchy and the fact that they run in packs. You watch the alpha, and the alpha is normally the one pulling up the rear, watching everything, aware of everything. The most dominant, probably the most youthful, the most strong, uh, eventually that alpha will evolve and become something different. Um, maybe probably not a beta because again, betas are normally young, but if you pay attention when, 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 when it gets time to throw down, it's more likely that the betas are the one tearing your ass up. So this idea that betas are just weak and useless and every woman's chasing an alpha. Now you want your man to be the alpha in the house. absolutely, freaking lootly But. In the presence of other men, he may not be that stand out. Now, he, he, he can't be docile and easily manipulated, but he may be a person that functioned better under a stronger leadership. But what happens is being under an, a, a person who is exhibiting the behaviors of a true alpha will help you develop the characteristics of an alpha inside of yourself so that when you step in an environment where you are not the strongest, you know how to behave. It's the betas that don't know how to behave, that step in and they want their women to be alphas. What, what, what should I do? What are we going to do? And sisters, you want a man to be a man, you're going to have to stand in a woman's place. For so long, I get it. There's been this push to be everything. And there's this scary thing going around where our women are being celebrated for doing far more than they should be doing. Every time I hear strong black woman, it makes me cringe. You know why? It's telling me that there's a black woman doing something she wasn't built to do. And I don't care how hard she goes. I don't care how successful she looks on the outside. She's never going to be a man. She's never going to fill that role. She may do some of the things that a man does, but just the man's presence alone represents something she can never emulate. That energy represents something she can never emulate. And so that's something she shouldn't have to do. We need to do better in choosing our mates. We need to do better in finding ways to make things work. And when they don't work, we need to find ways to remain present so that she's not left with filling the gap. And we can't be so caught up in our emotions that when another man comes along to fill the space, the emptiness we left, that we get all caught up and want to kill. 
You can't sit up and create voids and then expect that person to sit there the rest of their life and just be empty, lonely, and helpless. We've got to learn to understand if I sit up and I can't be there, then I've got to hope that she can choose someone that can fill that space. And I've got to be accepting of what that is and supportive as much as I possibly can. But we don't know how to do that. That's oh, no. Uh -uh. Everything is a win. I can't let her win. I can't let him win. I'm going to show him I can do it without him. I'm going to show her just how much she let go. All these different things are a part of an immature behavior that is contributing to the disintegration and the destruction of the black family, which is making us extremely and increasingly more vulnerable to the machinations and schemes of this system that is exploiting us, oppressing us, holding us down, and pushing us back. We are literally contributing to our own demise through our behavior. We need to find a love for ourselves that is unwavering, a love from inside. That's why it's so important to have a sense of identity, especially racial identity in this world, uh, and be okay with who we are at a level that we are even feeling ourselves. When I walk in an environment and I'm a minority, and that's often, except for when I go hang out with my guys, but when I walk in an environment, a lot of times I'm a minority. I'm not intimidated. I'm not awkward. I walk in there like I'm the baddest motherfucker in there. And I, when I'm engaged, I engage with that same mindset. You're talking to a king. And I've been doing that my whole life. I'm never going to look at you and think your color makes you better than me. But if I'm feeling that way, I'm going to look at the sister the same way. That's a bad sister. Look at what she's doing. Look at how she's doing it. I can't look at me and see this dope ass dude and then look at my sisters and say, nah, I'm going to go get me one of them. Yeah, I know it's going to piss off a lot of people, but again, my subscribership remains low because I'm going to tell it like it is. Chips going to fall where they may. Some people are going to be okay with it. Some people are not. But I'm going to keep telling the truth because at the end of the day, I'm going to be held accountable for, being, for, for what I've done with what I've been given. The great design of this universe, the most high almighty is going to look at me and say, I gave you this and I sent you out there. What did you do with it? I'm going to go back and say, hell, I tore that shit up. I did everything I possibly could. I, I, I spoke the truth. I stood my ground. I took bumps and bruises. I got knocked down. I got talked about. I got ridiculed. I got laughed at. They called me a simp. They, all these things that other people get caught up in. It, I say, but I stood my ground. See, I, the only one I'm uh, uh, worried about being accountable for in the end is myself and my designer. Now, on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a second tier level, I want to be accountable to the person that I marry. I want to be accountable to my children in my imperfection. I'm going to have things that I'm, I'm, I want to be better at and do better at. That's that. That should be every man. But at the end of the day, what will I? What will, what will my legacy say about me? What did I do? Did I go along to get along? Did I say stuff that I thought people wanted to hear because it it, it got me more likes and it increased revenue? You got a bunch of people selling you bullshit because they getting paid dollars, a bunch of money to do it, to misguide you, to mislead you, to set you astray so that you never find the true path to your empowerment because there are people that benefit from your vulnerability. That's the truth. I can't love me the way I love me and not love a black woman. If you know, and if at the end of the day I'm 75, 85, 90, and I still haven't found that long lasting thing, I will still have experienced some pretty nice relationships. My goal is to be settled down, but I tell you what, again, I will go back and I will take every last one of those relationships over any opportunity to be with any white woman out there. And I'm not just talking at the side of my neck. I've had opportunity to be with some that were extremely successful, that had their thing going on. It wasn't just those that are coming at me because of where I was at the time. It was people that was, hey, this person is interested in you. They asked about you. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. And that person could have put me in contact with a lot of people. It took me a long time to get next to. But I'm good. 
I'm too in love with me to ignore the the beauty of the woman that is the representation of what I should have. I'm, it's just what it is. But this whole J Jonathan Majors thing, like, and again, I'm going to say this. There's nothing more dangerous than a white woman willing to weaponize her whiteness. And that's all that happened right there. That big black man hit me. And if they weren't able to prove that she was lying, his ass was grass. He was counseled. He was going to get some some kind of legal ish, uh, you know, criminal charges thrown at him. He was already charged. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that black women don't uh, cry foul, that black women. I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is. The things that we tend to criticize our women for, they do and they do for worse and they're better at it. The thing is, we need to learn how to heal our community. There are going to be some black women that are just going to do what they do, just like there are going to be some black men who do what they do. That's the reality of it. But I, I, I am a firm believer from the work that I've done that if we learn to heal, we see better results. We heal our identity. We heal our identity crisis. We heal uh, the self-hatred that we have for ourselves. We begin to know how to love one another. We begin to know how to apply appreciation and value to one another. Yeah, as soon as I heard that Jonathan Major's girlfriend had accused him of uh, domestic violence. I said, okay, I'm almost certain it's a Becky. Just knowing how he has rolled and just the tendency, man. Anytime that happens, first thing in my mind, even if I'm not aware of how the guy gets down, I'm like, man, please don't let this be. And normally it is. And don't get me wrong. But here's the difference, I will say. And again, there are always exceptions to the rule. And then I'll, I'll be done. Normally, when a black man gets hemmed up for putting his hands on a black woman, he's put his hands on a black woman. Ray Rice, uh, Kareem Hunt. Uh, you know, they've done that. You know, and they pay hugely. And let me explain something to you. Get Let's be clear about this. Both of those men weren't hemmed up because they hit a black woman like they would have been hemmed up if they hit a white woman. They were hemmed up because it came out and it gave the league a black eye. It was a damage to the brand because Ray Rice, that didn't. by the time we got that video, it was almost a year. And they knew it happened and they were going to let it ride until the public got it and the outrage came. And Kareem Hunt was just the result of the outrage that was out there. And so he got swept up in it. Because you got a kicker in the NFL. I think he's got 17 domestic violence complaints against him. He may be, may be retired by now. But when this was going on, there was a kicker in the league. You know, he going home kicking the shit out of his white wife. And they letting, letting him make it. So just be aware of how things work. I, um, like I said, I love my people. I'm not here to take shots at anybody. But what I'm going to tell you is, and I agree with Dr. Umar Johnson 100%, you can, I cannot represent my blackness any better than loving a black woman. And I refuse to use the generalized approach with dealing with my brothers or my sisters, but I definitely refuse to use the generalized approach that black women are a problem. There are black women that are going through a lot, but there are some unbelievable, beautiful, loving, caring black women out there. A lot of them single too, bro. A lot of them are single, just beautiful women that are sharing nothing but love and refusing to marry outside of their race. They are the least likely 8%. And the crazy thing is black men aren't that inclined to marry outside of our race, but it does increase 
as we become successful. Now, again, that's not all because once I get successful, I think I want to. It's because the more successful I'm capable of being, the more attention I get from white women. The average black man ain't getting white play. Unless it's the trailer park chick. But I'm talking about, you know, I mean, up, upward mobility type play. You got to have something going for you. And once you have something going for you or they can see the potential that you have something going for you, then, yeah, you're starting to get attention. You're starting to get attention. It starts to play in your head. I'm getting attention from a white woman. To me, I'm like, I don't give a damn. I want to be loved by a black woman because I was birthed by a black woman. My sisters are black women. My daughters are black women. Do you understand the magnitude of what it would do to my daughters if I, all of my life I told them they're beautiful and they're the most gorgeous things in the world and then I went out and chose a white woman? We have to really think about what our behavior does outside of satisfy our immediate desires. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, as I always say, look, if you believe in the work we've been doing for more than, uh, well, three decades now, show some love, show some support. Just look in the description box, and you will find the ways that you can support the work we do at the Odyssey Project, the Black Voice, Black Men Lead, and so forth. On that note, I'm out of here. Thank you guys for lending me, wow, almost an hour of your time. Thank you. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.